the topics here selected is uh, for thin films because these materials are uh, a little bit tricky and we are trying to figure out how to do the experiments on thin films in a correct way so as the properties that you are actually measuring are right so before we get into the uh, more details let me uh, very briefly point out what nano indentation is if you are not familiar with it uh, with the nano indentation you can measure uh, many different kind of properties such as young's modulus hardness material creep interfacial adhesion fracture toughness and uh, all these properties are needed when you are trying to develop a new product you are trying to develop a new material or you are trying to design something based on those so th these properties are uh, crucial to be able to do those steps so with the nano indentation technique you can measure all these properties you do not have to go from one technique to other technique but can use the same instrument and actually are able to perform all this uh, experiment so now um, the way i will uh, follow up the presentation is i will uh, discuss a little bit about, about the problem and the history and i will then uh, talk about the technique what makes kla indenters unique then we will discuss the thin films and how we are using kla nano indenters to measure the properties of the thin films followed up by q and a so uh, before we uh, get into the uh, tiny details let's look, look at uh, some of these products uh, we we see them in our everyday life they are around us but, but we may not always pay attention to uh, the details so like where these thin films are for example i'm showing you solar panels you have thin films on the top of them as a protective barrier you have thin films on the top of your phone so that you when you are uh, navigating your phone to the screen touch it feels nice and still be able to do the function that is supposed to perform we have films and coatings on the turbine blades in jet engines to keep them thermally uh, basically to prevent the thermal degradation of them throughout the life cycle of the engine on the drill bits uh, we know that uh, whenever we are uh, drilling with the drill bits it uh, increases the temperature so we put these coatings on these drill bits to again increase the life of them as well as to uh, reduce the effect of the temperature on the drill bit um and a very common application is in the automotive we like to keep our cars nice and shiny all the time so we put a lot of different kind of coatings on them so that they last uh, longer and a uh, very uh, common thing is uh, our spectacles so we know that we put a lot of coatings on them to make them anti reflective to protect from uv and all those things so this is again are uh, very common examples of uh, thin films that are around us and we see them uh, uh, in our everyday life so uh, like any other product uh, when we are making these thin films when somebody is producing them so how do we do it so somebody manufactures them and then we have to make sure what we have manufactured is exactly what we needed and the way to do it we actually do some experiments on it to measure their properties such as hardness so the way we do it is we will make an indent on the top of any of this materials either it's a solar panel or either it's a phone screen then we will measure the indent area to calculate the hardness and we usually do not uh, care about the substrate effect So what happens in this process is uh, we are uh, unconsciously uh, basically introducing three kinds of errors the first error is uh, because of the technological limitation with the conventional micro hardness testers what you do is you end up making a really big indent that's uh, uh, deforming a lot more volume that you wanted to so we 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 can eliminate that uh, limitation with the nano indentation the second is user limitation now because we are measuring the area of this indent and 10 different users will measure this areas in 10 different ways so that that leads to inconsistencies in your data that we do not really want in our data we want to avoid that and the third part is uh, basically because of the poor understanding of the measurement um, you you are very likely uh, measuring this uh, properties on the thin film but but something not many people are aware of or have not really uh, understood the 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 effect of it is how much the substrate can influence this measurement so we we want to remove it we want to be able to take care of it so now because of this error let's say if somebody did not take care of this three errors so what happens is we see failures in our products 
in the solar panels, you would see, okay, these coatings on the top of them, we, we see this problem for the delamination, and it's just not desirable. In the phones, uh, it's a usual example. We want to use our phone for like a year, two year, three year, and we do not want the phone screen to have a lot of scratches on them. It just, it, you know, it's just annoying. So we want to uh, remove that. In the turbine blades, uh, it's a very crucial thing uh, because if there's even like slightest heat dam damage into these blades, so what will happen is because of the heat damage, uh, even if out of all these hundreds of blades in your jet engine, even if one blade fails, that would lead to a catastrophic failure. So we want to avoid that. And in the drill bits, uh, again, the, the point is that we want to be able to use the drill bits for much longer time if we, uh, if, we, if we want to reduce the cost in our operations. And again, going back to our automotive and the uh, spectacles examples, we just want to be um, able to use them in our everyday life and, and, and still be able to use it for longer time without any degradation in the quality of the products we have. So now that we understand uh, why we are talking about the thin films and uh, why we even care about uh, measuring it right. So, now, with the Kali nano inventors, uh, we have the solution to measure these uh, properties. And this is what uh, is going to be the focus of this presentation. Now, before I get into uh, the, the, the actual product, what I would like to talk a little bit about is the history of nano inventors. The Kali uh, nano inventors have been on the market since 1983. And it was by Dr. Warren Oliver, who introduced this uh, new technique. He designed these inventors, and he is the one who is designing the KLA nano inventors ever today. So throughout this uh, last 35 years, uh, the company had gone through different transitions. It was under the name of MTS in 1998. Then it became Agilean Technologies, and now it's KLA. So throughout these 35 years, what we have is a really great experience on different kind of materials that we have used, experimented on, and a really great database of how to do this kind of measurement, right? Whether it's in the solar side, whether it's in the phones, whether it's in the drill bits. And because of that immense knowledge that we have, we have established ourselves as a like most robust, reliable, and easiest to use nano inventor system that you can use in many applications uh, without any problem. So, and, uh, the few few things that I can uh, mention right now is so nano inventor can be in a different form. We have a G200 that's the fully loaded system, meaning that you can do many more different kind of experiments than just the thin film property measurement. And we have iMicro and iNano that's a, a desktop system that you can uh, put it on a desk in a lab space and doesn't really need a dedicated operator. You can operate it very easily. And we have a system that can go inside the SEMs. We call it uh, NanoFlip and InSEMHT. NanoFlip is uh, without high temperature, and InSEMHT is if you would like to do the experiments at a high temperature. So you have all these different options to perform your experiments based on what your needs are. Now, so if you have not uh, uh, heard about nano inundation or don't know how the process works, so the basic uh, example is this you have a sample, and you are putting an indent on the sample with a tip that could be different kinds. And here we are using a Berkowitz tip. And what you do is you move your tip onto the surface and penetrate into the surface. While doing so, what you are measuring is the load that you're applying on the tip and the displacement it is producing into the surface. And the process is really fast. You can do it in a matter of seconds. And because it is so fast, you can produce multiple hundreds of indents to to get a really, really nice statistical data on your samples. Like you see here, you can produce hundreds of data points. And so the, the, the final number, the final properties you get, you, you have a, such high confidence in those properties compared to uh, if, if you have only like, let's say 10 points in your uh, experiment. So now we, that we understand how this uh, process is working, let, let's look at what we do with this data. So we have this uh, data, we have load and the displacement. And after that, uh, we know really well how the contact mechanics work. We know really well how when one material is compressing or pushing on the another material, 
and we know the total deformation, we can very precisely figure out how to what are the properties of the uh, the second material that we are pushing on. So we use a lot of uh, contact mechanics. So this is all real physics. This is not uh, based on some kind of interpolation. This is real physics. So we use this real superior physics in our uh, indenters and calculate the properties of Young's modulus, hardness, and many more that uh, that you can think of. So, so how are we doing this? Um, in in the video, if you remember, there was a tip mounted on a, a circular piece, and this piece is called actuator, and this is kind of the heart of the system. When we are applying the loads on uh, on these different different samples, what we are trying to do is we are trying to very precisely control the loads we are applying, and then we are very precisely uh, controlling the displacement that we are producing into the system. And the way we do it is uh, on the top of our head, we have this uh, coil and magnet assembly, and this is what we call electromagnetic actuation. So we apply the current to this coil, and based on the electromagnetism, it uh, produces force, and that's how we are uh, producing the load on the surface of the sample. While doing so, we also have something called capacitive plates on mounted on this uh, indenter shaft. So when we are applying the loads and the indenter is moving, what happens is this capacitive plates are also moving. And uh, as we know, the capacitance is a very sensitive quantity. So even very, very slight adjustment, very, very slight movement, we can uh, uh, capture them and that's how we know what are the displacement into the surface. So, so far we have two inputs. We know how we are applying the load and we are measuring very precisely the displacement into the surface. Now, this is a uh, one of the key advantage of our system because uh, if we compare it to other systems and then you will realize what is the key advantage. We use electromagnetic actuation where the force is linearly dependent on the current. So it's a simple closed form solution. Everything is a linear system. We have a clear separation of variables and we have two different independent channels. So what it means is that we can always reference back to the same calibration standards. We don't have to worry about uh, what my state of the reference state to my system is. But if we look at some other indenters, some other commercial indenters, they tend to use electrostatic or piezoelectric uh, prop, uh, actuation. So what happens there is in uh, in electrostatic, you, you the, the so the, the actuation principle, the loads and the displacement, they are coupled and th this just adds to the complexity of the, uh, the, the process. We, whenever we are doing experiment, we want to do it as simple as possible because we do not want to make it so complicated that we never know where the errors are coming from. Now in this electrostatic and future electric, the problem is even if there is a, even a slightest error in one part of the measurement, it will compound and, and become a really big error in other part of the measurement. So this is just uh, this is just not the right way to do it. This is just not desirable. So KLA nano indenters have utilized the electromagnetic uh, actuation, the linear force control, to and based on the uh, superior physics that we know that we have based on this 35 years of experiment to design the system that's really stable and that gives you the same data each and every time you perform this experiment. Now this is the one part. And then comes the second important part is continuous stiffness measurement. And this is related to how much data you are getting. And as you have heard, data is power, right? The more data you have, the better decisions you can make. So with continuous stiffness measurements, what you get is a lot more data than what you will get with the regular nano indenters that other uh, commercial indenters produce. And the reason is again, our superior physics in our electromagnetic actuation. While we are applying load on the system, we have this load and the displacement curve. In addition to the applying load, what we are doing is we have two loads on the system. We have the mean force and we have the harmonic force. So what it means is, and an analogy could be, you can think of it as uh, applying a AC current and DC current at the same time. And because of that, what you get is displacement signals and the load signals and the stiffness at each oscillations of this AC current. And that is translated into, like on this graph on the right-hand side, you see you see a lot of data points. So all these data points are from one single experiment. So from one single experiment, you get how your properties are throughout the depth of this particular material. And this is really, really advantageous when it comes to thin film materials. And uh, here is what you see. So. Let's say if you have a thin film on the 
like a hard film on the top of some soft substrate. So what will happen is uh, you will see the effect of it in your data, like on the uh, curve in this right hand side, when the film is not there, after you are, the thickness of the film is gone, you will see that the properties of uh, the properties that you're measuring are dipped. And this is a very direct measurement of the effect of your uh, substrate and effect of your thin film. So this is a really, really key advantage of using continuous st stiffness measurement that is only possible with the electromagnetic actuators of the k Tankor system. So uh, at this point, I want to just quickly summarize the technique part. So what we have is a nano inundation technique that allows you to measure the properties of your thin film without the need to image the indent. And this is a really key thing. We do not want to image the indents because it leads to errors. It leads to user errors. The second part is uh, because of our electromagnetic actuator, we are able to calibrate and perform the very, very repeatable measurements uh, all the time because it's a linear system and we do not have to worry about the errors because of the complexities of the coupling of the parameter. And the third part is uh, we account for the substrate effect in this property measurements of the thin films using our continuous stiffness measurement. And I will actually talk a little bit more about how we are doing it. There is a mathematical model that we apply to account for the substrate effect. Moving on, so let's talk about uh, why, why and how we are uh, correcting for this uh, substrate effect in our thin film. So the, the problem we have at our hands is uh, we have a system, we have a substrate that uh, is blue in this schematic and we have a thin film that is shown as red in the schematic. We are performing an indent from the top and what we want to do is we want to know the properties of only the thin film. We do not want any contribution from the substrate. But usually what happens is uh, because of the nature of the thin films or because of the nature of the experiment, that we end up indenting both in the top and the bottom. So we have H1 and H2. So the properties that you are really measuring is H1 plus H2. But our goal is that we only want H1. We do not really want H2 contributions in our measurement. And the way to do it is we take our total measurements, HP, and we are removing the substrate contribution, the H2 from these properties. So how do we do it? And actually, you know, before we um, do it, let's look at this video to so that you really believe what is happening here. And this is a simulation of uh, indentation. You are performing an indent from the top of the thin film, and you have a substrate at the bottom. And so, what is happening is uh, the the colored part that you see. So, this is the total volume that is uh, being deformed. So, when you are performing this indent, this is the total volume being deformed, and you could clearly see that uh, when you're perf you, the, the effect is both in the top and the bottom part. You, you have this total deformation. So you really want to, want to care about it. You really want to remove it. You really want to know what is the deformation only in your thin film so that you know what are the properties only of your thin film, not the whole system. So the way to do it is, uh, what we do is uh, apply a model called Hay Crawford model and she's our, one of our senior application scientists, Jennifer Hayes, she developed this model. And this is not uh, um, like an interpolation. This is actual based, this is based on actual physics, how we account for uh, a, the substrate in this uh, property measurement. So you can think of it is like this. If you have the indenter coming from the top, you have a thin film and then your substrate. So you have three body system. Now, all we need to do is using our contact mechanics, using our fundamental physics, we just want to find out, we want to decouple the effect in the thin film and the substrate and then remove it. So you can find a lot more details on this in the paper mentioned here that I have uh, on, the, on the left uh, right hand side. But, but the key is this, all of these details are already included in the, the methods that we use to measure the properties of the thin film. You do not really need to know exactly how it is applied. All you need to do is you need to tell your instrument when you're doing the measurement that I'm performing this measurement on the thin films and all of this is integrated in the software. So you do not really have to know this as well as you think. And once you do this, once you apply the substrate correction, what you have is the data that is actually correct. In this graph, what you see is a blue line that is the substrate influence modulus. So what it means is uh, we see that properties are increasing as we go into the depth of your uh, coating. 
and you would think why my coatings like why the properties are increasing why why is it, it doesn't make sense right because our our material is same now another tricky part is this if you use the conventional micro hardness tester if you use the other commercial nano inventor they do not have the depth dependent properties because they cannot do continuous stiffness measurement so what you will end up doing is you will actually just measure one point somewhere on this blue curve and that's just that's just wrong and you will think that's the properties but that's clearly not the right properties you it just happened to be the point that you picked on that particular day and if so if you actually do it with a different loads or a different depth at different points in the time you will get different numbers and you will think you have made different products or you have a different uh, or change in the process but it is still the same thin film it is a, still the same product but you are just getting different numbers because the depth you are measuring and that's just going to be a problem later in your product so if you apply the thin film solution when you apply the kla tankol thin film solution what happens is it connects for the substrate error and what you get is this red curve that is the true properties of this thin film now the, now so one advantage is that using the continuous stiffness measurement you are getting the right properties and the second advantage is so here even if you perform just one point at any part of your depth you are still getting the right property so there is like double advantage using the kla uh, nano inventor and you really have to worry about uh, this uh, when you are performing the measurements on your thin film so far we we focused really we really focused on the thin films and how we can measure them right because this is something we 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 see in the field a lot we see a lot of failures in the product because just because of the wrong measurements now with the kla indenters there's something uh, i want to talk a little bit more about what more you can do so it's not just eliminating the substrate error and uh, it's about some other kind of properties such as scratch high temperature testing and such that you could do with the same indenter with the same system and the and the reason we can do it is again it goes back to the 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 development the design of the product we have the products which apply really long really large load range and still still maintain the force and the depth resolution in some cases in some other commercial indenters what they do is they um, they do like a really high load resolution but at the expense of the depth resolution but in our case and 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 we discussed it already that because the 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 systems are coupled they do not have independent variables that's why they have to do it that way in our case we know it's a linear system we have a decoupled channel we can maintain the resolutions in both sides at the same time so because we can do this what are the advantages the first thing is scratch testing for coatings the the, the thin films and the failures we discussed about the property measurement is one thing and the other is we we do not want it to fail we do not want it to delaminate we do not want it to have any permanent scratches on it uh, during the use of the property what you could do is you could perform a scratch test in a really controlled manner on your coating all you need to do is you just need to select a point you don't need to do anything else you just need to select a point where you want to do the scratch and the system does everything else for you it will go and do a pass it will tell you what is the plastic deformation in my system what is the elastic deformation in my thin film based on the load that i applied and how much basically it would be the permanent failure at what load at what load it will start to delaminate at what load we will start to see scratches so it this is uh, very common in our phone the top layer on our phone we want to coat our phone screens with a thin layer that is thin enough so that our uh, user experience our this uh, controls you know the touch control doesn't go away we don't lose a lot in the touch controls but at the same time we do not want it to be the material or thin enough that just in a month of you having your phone you start to see scratches on your phone so this is where this uh, kind of test come in you can simulate the tests on your uh, phone screen to make sure your coating is thick enough and strong enough that uh, you will have a great user experience without having any permanent scratches in your phone so let's go to the second example and uh, this is tied back to the continuous stiffness measurements we have been talking about the one of the key key advantage of using the kla nano indenters the 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 idea is uh, with the nano indenters and you can perform a lot of tests in a really fast fashion on the right hand side image you see this little uh, gray side the little dots all of them are individual indents we are talking about a 16 like 40 by 40 array of indents in just like less than an uh, half an hour this is this is a huge amount of data that you can collect using the nano indenter now 
add this array with something called uh, our continuous stiffness measurement our mapping of this uh, area and continuous stiffness measurement gives us the depth dependent properties and this is what we call 4d mechanical property mapping one example here would be in the in semiconductor devices in electronics the way they are produced is we lay one layer above the other and and have the final product now we cannot measure the properties after each layer this it will be just too time consuming it's just an inefficient process so what you could do is you could produce your chip and at the end of it you know when you have once you are done with the whole the process then we can perform the experiment from the top and again find out how the properties are changing through the thickness how my uh, the stiffness that are changing through the thickness and this would be important because uh, chips they produce heat and because of the heat because of the residual stresses produced because of the, uh, of the heat you you tend to see delamination or or the breaking in the bond that's one one big uh, failure mechanism so you could see how these properties are changing and and try to avoid those failures and the third part is uh, that we discussed a little bit in the very beginning of the high temperature testing in the drill bits in the in the turbine engine blades as material scientists we know that we we want to simulate the experiment as closely as possible we 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 really try to avoid the interpolations as much as possible so for the high temperature applications materials what you want to do is you want to perform the experiment at high temperature we have this uh, laser heated stage that uh, uh that that's a real real improvement uh, on the the conventional heaters that you will see in other commercial indenters it reduces the total time that you will need to heat the sample to a particular temperature as well as it will reduce the any thermal uh, drift and the thermal instabilities you have will have in your measurement so using this stage you can mount your sample and understand the influence of temperature at different different materials at different different uh, levels or different different temperatures so you could do all the experiments we discussed so far on your coatings on your thin films using the high, uh, high temperature stage to understand what's the behavior of your material at the high temperature so um so far so let me conclude our uh, presentation with uh, this uh, three points so we talked about uh, the problems in the thin film measurements the first one was the technological limitation and uh, the problem was can we make an indent small enough to measure it right and the problem with the micro hardness testers is that you cannot really do it with the electromagnetic actuator of the kla indenters with the the superior physics we have used uh, to to precisely control the load and the displacement we can make this measurement the second part was the user limitation in the in the traditional hardness measurements you have to actually measure the area and that that just uh, it, it's just not the right way to do things with the nano indentation you do not need to measure the area you do not need to know the shape of your tip so you do you eliminates any user error in your measurement and the third part is the poor understanding the measurement it's just uh, um, we, we just did not consider the substrate in so many of these measurements and then we see failures so you can reduce this you can actually improve on this measurement using continuous stiffness measurement you can use continuous stiffness measurements to remove the substrate effect and actually measure the true properties of the material and at this point i will just briefly summarize the products that we have g200 the 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 fully loaded system for thin film measurement for the polymer measurement for the high temperature measurement for the scratch it can do everything you can think of and then i micro and i nano these are the desktop system they are also can have a lot of options and would be a really really nice system if you are starting your lab and the nano flip and insem hd system if you are performing experiments on really small samples and you want to be able to do it inside an scm then you can use nano flip and insem hd to perform this experiment 